Hey folks, we are live now. So we are with Sanket sir and Sandeep and uh, it's just an humble beginning that we have right now because DevOps is huge and we are on the path of educating all the person. Like it's not like everybody has their own way of learning. It's about like we are just appreciating every person who is just wanting to learn DevOps. So I think Sandeep, do the honors for the AZ day. Yeah, so AZ Dev uh, is a Azure developer community, uh, and here we uh, have daily sessions or monthly sessions going on. Uh, we bring uh, different uh, speakers, and on we different we have different uh, topics to be covered over here. Uh, so here, uh, in case anyone is interested to be uh, a part of this community as a speaker or an organizer, uh, they can come to this site like azdev.community and uh, do sign up as a organizer or as a speaker. Uh, so today we have a uh, speaker, uh, Sanket Shinde, and uh, we'll be having the topic uh, DevOps and uh, how, uh, how beginners can enter into a DevOps so that he will be demonstrating today. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, uh, Sanket, sir, you know, I would love to get to know both of your DevOps journey because I'll tell you how my journey started. I didn't know that I was doing MLOps until they told me you are writing a paper on MLOps and that's where my journey of DevOps started. It's not a DevOps journey. I was an ML guy, you know, where we started off our journey as like, okay, this is what I need to do. Okay, I need to analyze the data, build a model, version it. And versioning was not considered as DevOps to me because I know that, okay, yeah, chalega. Like we had an ML flow, we had all the other ML ops pipelines built, but I didn't know that I was part of an ML ops pipeline. So that's what my journey of DevOps was all about. It's not DevOps. We all do that. We all program things and we all just automate things. You know, it's just like a clean and a very shiny looking Linux command. That's what I feel about DevOps. Like it's all like just manipulated out and said that, hey, this is what your environment is. This is what you'll be doing. And this is what we'll always be aiming towards and just do your work properly. We are here to take care of it. So that's what my journey and my definition towards the DevOps is. So I think uh, Sanket sir, if you can share your journey, that would be awesome. Hey, sure, Vishwas. Uh, hi, Sandeep. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, thank you for inviting me over. And um, like uh, Sandeep has uh, Sandeep and Vishwas has introduced, this is today is going to be all about DevOps. And Vishwas, you are close. So the what you explained about DevOps, um, in more or less, um, you are close. Uh, I'll I'll be just uh, giving uh, giving what I came into DevOps, right? Why why how I reached at this role and how it happened for me. So when I started my career, uh, I was I, I was a software developer. It started as a .NET software developer, and for first three years, I was just coding into C Sharp and you know Angular. That time, Angular one was going on. So, I, I did my uh, first three years in coding and developed full stack applications. But one thing was always uh, one thing used to keep uh, always bugging me, right? How these applications, what we develop on our system, how actually it goes on internet, right? How how the like uh, we I used to think about these applications, Facebook, Instagram, and others. How actually Actually, we are rolling out this to millions of people, right? There has to be some kind of automation in place. What I do as a developer, I just code and I, that's it. I commit into the GitHub. But how does actually it goes on to the uh, onto the different servers, right? And, and uh, different regions. We have India region, US region, EMEA, South Asia. So. Uh, this I was very curious to understand this, and and that's when uh, I was lucky to I, I get int uh, introduced with this Japanese manufacturing company Yamazaki Mazak, and they offered me a role. Uh, they asked me, Sanket, uh, you are a good developer, we know, but we have a new requirement, right? We want you to play a role of uh, technical lead as well as we want to take our entire infrastructure to the cloud. And that time, AWS was only, Azure was is in initial days. And uh, as you know, AWS is uh, four or five years uh, elder to Azure. So um, I started with AWS, my cloud journey, and that's how I started getting into DevOps. Okay, I started understanding what this DevOps world is uh, world is all, all about, right? What is the, this culture? Many people say DevOps is a culture, right? Now, then at, at, at that level, I started understanding. Okay, that's how. Okay, this is this fills the gap between developers and operations. So, and now after uh, uh, after into like let's say four or five years in DevOps, now I know actually. And uh, let me tell you, DevOps is not uh, day one or uh, let's say uh, fast activity. Teams needs to go through a lot of discipline and a uh, lot of effort 
to become a DevOps compliant team. I, I would say not a compliant to build that culture. It's it's not about you use Jenkins or you use any tool. You are you know Sonar Cube, and we say that you are a DevOps. Uh, you are a DevOps enabled organization. No. It doesn't. We, I would say, I'm in Microsoft. Still, Microsoft is not DevOps enabled organization. We have long journey to go, and DevOps is all about automation and all about the the moment you see, okay, something is going manual. Uh, we have to think, right? What can be done to automate that uh, that particular area? What can be the script, or can I use some tool? That's that's the DevOps mindset we should have, and it's not about just learning few tools and um, going there and uh, saying as a DevOps. So it's it's a continuous journey of learning, and I'll, I'll talk more about it uh, when we start. So Vishwas, do you uh, do you want to add anything uh, in the start, or should I get started? Yeah, it would be great. Yeah, I think Sandeep, you can just yeah put a little spark on your DevOps journey because it was yeah yeah Sandeep. Because He's a dev now and he still does DevOps and cloud. So uh, really yeah, so what Sanket has said uh, is very right. Like uh, I have been uh, introduced to DevOps as a part as a, as being a developer uh, till date. Uh, and DevOps journey, like I am not into totally in DevOps. Like DevOps is huge world, as Sanket said. Uh, there are so many things uh, which a developer sees is very a uh, few part of it. Uh, I can say like pushing the code or getting the things done or developed deployed into the uh, basically servers. So that part I have explored, like how to uh, deploy the things, how the things get deployed, uh, how they're getting integrated, how they're getting tested, how the test reports generated, and how the basically the CI/CD pipeline. But DevOps is a way beyond CI/CD pipeline. That's what I think, and maybe Sanket will give us uh, get us through that today. That's what I expect from Sanket today. Yeah, thank you, Sanket. Yeah. You can proceed. Great, Sandeep. Thanks. Yeah, that's that's my target today. So come out of that CI/CD thing. Uh, so let me start sharing screen and let's go through what is what DevOps is. So first, we'll uh, as per the agenda, let's go to introduction of DevOps. Uh, let me, <clears throat> Vishwas, let me know if you can see my screen. I'll just uh, pop it up. Okay. All right. So, do you see my um, um, dotted IO screen? Yeah. Yes, yes, we can see that. Okay, great. So uh, again, like I said, um, going through the presentation, different slides, rather than I, I prefer talking about DevOps uh, with you all uh, through the diagrams. So first, before I start drawing anything or uh, talking about what is the DevOps definition and what how the DevOps goes, I uh, from the participants, if you could if you could tell me your definition of DevOps in the comments. Uh, or um, just get started and we can start with Vishwas itself. Vishwas, you are a student. Um, what do you think? What, according to you, uh, definition of DevOps is? Yeah, I feel DevOps is a set of practices that just describes, okay, this is what you are supposed to be doing. So uh -huh. let's just add a little bit of agility to it. Let's just mm -hmm. build fast, deliver fast. Let's be uh -huh. happy sooner. And later okay. on, let's just revolve over the process and just say, okay, this is what we need to improvise. Let's just make the application evolve. That's what the definition of DevOps, according to me. Okay, great. So, yeah. So first, uh, for understanding DevOps, I think first we need to know what are the different factors we have in end-to-end um, -end, uh, software development lifecycle, right? Now, first and very important aspect that comes into our mind is the customers. Right, because without customers, there is no software industry. Right, the customers are the ones who are going to give us the product vision, right? Requirements, what we want to build, right? Other, if 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 there is no product, uh, if there is no one who is envisioning the product, then we we don't have that visibility in mind how we go forward, right? Then once the customer is there, the second uh, team we need is a development team. Right, and now this development team I'm dividing into two two phases. First is a, let's say we have a project manager. Okay, in any software, uh, any any let's take an example of a software pro software project. Let's say Amazon or Facebook, any website, how it gets built, right? Or or let's say any project which is customers are giving us a requirement and our team is going to build it. Now this uh, set of folks I'm calling as a project manager. It could be a technical architect here and a product owner, right? So three entities. 
now this is where i would i i like to tell everyone that this is where day off starts now people always think that okay day off starts at the cicd level no so day off starts right when you start the discussion about any software or any product now how at this phase we even i have not onboarded my team correct i have not onboarded my team i don't see developers in this picture what i have is customers and then we have uh, we have identified a technical architect for one project project manager is there product owner is there now what happens is a uh, continuous requirement workshops will happens with customer right what kind of software you want to build, build or this we can call them as a stakeholders also right those are envisioning the software now what will happen between these two entities they will keep on discussing about the product in a requirement workshops right now requirement workshops what is the output of requirement workshops so the project manager product owner technical architect technical architect are actually listening to okay what vision of the product is and what they are looking for in the product what they will do is they will need some kind of a tool to articulate their articulate the backlog for this product and that's the first tool we need to consider in a in a devops uh, entire devops landscape and that tool is where you will log your work right where you will where you will create the backlog for your work when i say backlog it could be a different user stories right features of my entire product it could be a user stories it could be a tasks of that user stories so first the backlog is created for my entire product right and this is a continuous activity it's not just that okay we are in sprint one those who are uh, from agile here so it is a continuous hello okay so it is a continuous uh, ongoing activity so let's say we build the backlog now in devops there are multiple tools to manage this backlog now we are learning the first set of tools in the devops that it could be azure boards it could be jira right some people still prefer T tfs Right. This is the first step in DevOps where you actually create the vision of your product in terms of a we we are giving some kind of a shape to our product by adding the backlog in these tools. Now every software development team will be using this kind of a tool to log their uh, to create the backlog in the initial phase. Now what happens is the okay now uh, the product owner project manager technical architect combinedly decide okay we have now enough backlog we uh, let's say uh, for three four weeks we had the requirement workshops with customers and now we have the enough backlog in my azure boards or jira or tfs ready now i want to kick off the project now what will happen that's when very important team in the pro in the development life cycle will get onboarded that's our developers maybe it is a front-end developer back-end developer or it is a um, tester like again i am calling developers tester and the same umbrella of developers now what they will do they now readily have the vision of the product in one of the devops tools so guys what i am trying to say here is backlog management or your uh, work management tool is a part of devops and that's the first tool and very important tool where the stakeholder stakeholders and the entire team communicates now what is going to happen developers will start looking into the backlog which is created in this tool and what they will do, start doing they will start adding their code based on the user stories right based on the user stories they will start adding the code in the source code management solution which we called it as a scm right source code management now source code management solutions there we have a lot of options here right we have a github Right, GitHub is one of where we manage our source code. Then we have Bitbucket. There are different uh, competitors of um, source code management uh, tools, right? And similarly, we have GitLab, or for that matter, Azure rep Repos. So different different tools to solve the same problem that is source code management. Now. Here, because you you guys are new to DevOps, one thing to understand: this all vendors. These are vendors of technology called as a Git. So Git is a technology. It's a concept. Like it was invented by Linus Tor Torvalds, right? So Git gives us the mechanism of mechanism of versioning the different uh, core entities. But these guys, GitHub, Bitbucket, Azure Repos, what they did, 
they commercialized the git mechanism or a concept or a technology and they they are offering us a when they are kind of a vendors of a git they are offering us a paid solution to store our code so what developers will do developers will look at the backlog items okay i have these two user stories and then i have a front end repository here now i am doing it at high level generally there are multiple repositories so i'll take for the sake of simplicity i'll take three repositories for now so i'll have three kinds of repositories what are those my front end code which could be a angular react my back end code right it could be a java.net or python node.js and very important repository that is my iac infrastructure as a code now these developers out of these developer teams some might be the devops engineers also now that's where the devops engineer come that devops engineers will be creating this repository to create our infrastructure okay now let's take us stop here now uh, what i what i tell customers uh, customers are giving requirements to our stake uh, project manager technical product owner they created the backlog with the different discussions and then developers are look taking that backlog into sprints and create uh, pushing the so front end team will push the code in front end code back end team will push the code in back end code and devops engineer will push the code in infrastructure as a code which is a technology called as a terraform is currently kind of a popular solution now rather than like understanding the devops uh, definition right i'm trying to tell you where are the gaps in the software development life cycle that devops is trying to, uh, going to fill now this is these developers are working on their local machines and they are pushing the codes or they are cloning the code and putting it on the cloud Uh, sorry putting it on the um, uh, the git vendors github azure repos bitbucket now what of what is the target of each software development system or what is the target of each web application or each software system is it has to be deployed on the internet right now let's say this is my internet what is the internet guys it is just a somewhere a server in the cloud right there will be somewhere something like suppose i want to launch this as a uh, let's say um devops meetup.com this is my devops meetup application now i want the internet users to log into this application and these are my users they will come on from the internet on devops meetup.com and they should be able to see my website now my website is going to be hosted in this rectangle now this rectangle could be a data center right it i i could have my servers on my local data center i could have it on aws which is a public cloud i could have it on azure or i could have it on google cloud right so these are the public solutions of cloud and i could have this on a virtual machine so let's say take a example like i have a different vms in the cloud or it could be on a any any kubernetes kind of a solution so we will talk more about it when we reach it okay so it is there somewhere on my in somewhere either some data center or aws or azure or google public cloud right the infrastructure is present here my developers are here my code is here now what i want to do as a part of a devops that whenever anything gets added into my devops right my github or azure repos or bitbucket i want to set up the kind of automation that will that will come in between which will deploy my code to this vms uh, to production virtual machines or my production kubernetes cluster in an automated way now in traditional systems if you have observed how we used to work we have a developers team which is here and then we used to have some kind of a team called as operations team now how we used to work we used to develop a software in house and then we we used to uh, we we used to publish that locally and then we have a, we get used to get some folder then what we used to do we used to supply that folder to our operations team manually over the email or let's say by by, by some kind of a file share solution that um, team what they used to do 
that team will actually take that file file folder and put it on a production server that's how it used to happen now there are a lot of chances to have a manual errors in that system right because we are manually copying our code to a production server there is no no way of monitoring right there is no way of now every time if i just change the title of my application every time my developer have to publish the new copy then the copy that again folder manually go to the production in if some manual mistake happens my production is down right that's how traditional system used to work before devops but now what we are talking is what is this devops right what what is what it is what gap it is going to fill so first we understood it is going to fill the gap of backlog it is giving us tools to manage and uh, manage my work manage my backlog second it is giving me a source code management tools which is bitbucket github azure repos where i can store my code now first and very important thing what happens ideally in devops now i'm talking about ideal devops it gen it, it might be you go for a partial devops so you don't automate everything but what ideal devops should happen like that current initially i don't have this vm and kubernetes also what should happen is this is infrastructure as a code repo first it will the the infrastructure which i want to actually create on my production data center or aws or azure that i have written as a code here so what happens is this infrastructure as a code repository triggers a pipeline suppose this is my uh, continuous deployment pipeline now i am directly jumping i will talk about continuous integration also but i am first talking about infrastructure right we go one by one so right now what i need in my data center aws azure or google is some infrastructure created i want to deploy this application which is in the code format right now i want to deploy it on a production so my production should have the right infrastructure for me now because the, of, of the technology enhancement i can define that infrastructure as a code also that is this infrastructure as a code and for that we have a technologies like terraform then we have a arm ARM is Azure. Then we have um, a um, cloud formation in AWS. So this technology give us a way to write your infrastructure as a code. Now, first thing, what what happens in Sprint One? Once the DevOps engineer create this infrastructure scripts, the CD pipeline will be triggered. Now, in order to create that CD pipeline, we have various solutions, and we'll talk about it when we talk about the tools which we, we which we will use to create the CD pipeline. It should trigger, and it should create my infrastructure first. Now, what is happening? Whatever I have uh, written an infrastructure as a code in this particular box, that is getting evaluated, and then it will create my virtual machine. So this this configuration might say I need three virtual machines. So it will create three virtual machines in my public cloud. Right? Now this is this level of automation actually currently happening in the industry, guys. So we even don't create this infrastructure manually. We do everything in automated way. What we do, we just define the infrastructure in a Git repository, which is IIC. Then my pipeline is going to trigger on top of that code. It will read the code. Okay, this, this code will say deploy three virtual machines on my AWS cloud or deploy, deploy three virtual machine on my Azure cloud. Then what, what it will do, the CD pipeline, the DevOps tools has a mechanism to read that file and connect with the target environment and do the deployment. What additional thing it will have, it will say deploy a load balancer on top of these three machines so that my actual users will hit on the ip of this load balancer and get the actual application or actual website right so for infrastructure as a code it is a straightforward deal what it is doing is it is reading the reading the configuration file which says i need three virtual machines and one load balancer and it deployed that on my production cluster now the tricky part comes what is the tricky part how i am going to deploy my front end code and back end code on this virtual machine 
now that's where the entire automation starts coming in now what i did i created my infrastructure as a code my cd pipeline was triggered and it created my infrastructure so my code is ready my infrastructure is ready now i what i want to do i want to deploy the latest application code on my infrastructure and that's where the concept of ci cd pipeline comes into the devops this is my ci pipeline and this is my cd pipeline now you will ask me sanket what is ci and cd see ci is a continuous integration what is a continuous integration continuous integration will build the code present in my github repository will build the code present in my backend code repository it will it will check that code for the code quality it will check the, it will run all the test cases on that code it will uh, so basically all the all the prerequisite which 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 needs uh, before we deploy any code to the production there that code has to be a secure that code has to be a properly written cleanly written and that code has to be a tested for all functional and all the logical scenarios so my continuous integration first job of my continuous integration is build my code because here nowhere we are saying we are building locally right everything is uh, happening of through the automation so first activity happens in my ci pipeline is building the code second activity that is going to happen in my ci pipeline is code quality so here the solutions like um, your sonar cube right um, uh, which is very very famous tool to check for code quality and there are many more then the testing like j unit i want to test my entire code also so uh, code testing okay and then the last last part of ci pipeline is my packaging of this code okay so what i'm doing i'm building my code i'm checking that code for code quality i'm testing that code and then at the last i'm going to package my code right now why you you will ask me sanket what is this package it is correct right for my front end i will build the code i will check the code quality i will check the code testing and then i will package now why we need to package the code is we need to convert the code into a deployable format right so my dot net application will get converted into a folder which is a which is comprises of a dlls right my um, let's say node ap application or python application will get converted into its deployable format right or if you are going for a containerization those are advanced concept my this packaging is nothing but a creating a image of my entire code so my ci is always going to do this basic functions in that continuous integration pipeline now what then cd does cd cd takes this packaged version and it deploys the first thing it does is deploying this version on the dev environment right because now i am saying dev we don't deploy anything directly on the production right so what it will do it will deploy it on a dev environment so this is how my application will build it will, it is now how i what i can say my code is why it is secure and what why it is good for quality because i have gone through this phase ci phase so i'm i'm good to say that my code is now accurate not accurate my code is actually tested for a quality and uh, it passes all the test cases and that's where i i deployed it for dev environment now dev environment nothing but the infrastructure like this but at uh, some different uh, different subscription or different uh, at a low price uh, infrastructure okay but it is the replica of what this uh, what, what i have represented here now what will happen the next phase our testing team manual testing team will test my application on dev right and it will give the sign off for my uat environment so similarly the app, the code will go to uat and similarly my code at the end goes to production okay i am going to take a pause after this so i want to ask any i want to take any questions if they are, they are in the comments so let me complete this just and when when i say prod then this nothing but 
my code goes to this production environment which is created by my isc repository now you will ask me sanket what what is the landscape of devops in all this now landscape of devops is setup of this backlog environment configure and set up this entire repository architecture front end back end repository what will be the branching policies what will what 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 is my branching strategy so basically configuring all these things backlog management tool source code management tool my ci pipeline now and configuring end to end ci pipeline my configuring my end to end cd pipeline then when i say configuring it is not just uh, setting the, creating this pipeline you have to add this who will approve my uat deployment who will approve my production deployment and then the creating this infrastructure as a code script so this all activities form under the landscape of a devops engineer or a devops architect devops architect basically designs this whole system right at what places we need to introduce the devops right and then then the what are the things we are talking backlog scm ci cd very important aspect that is monitoring is also part of a devops and continuous feedback is also part of a devops now for that i will uh, ready madely i have one diagram which i'll pop up in front of you but whatever i discuss till now i want to check if we have any questions okay i'm i'm constantly listening that it's a pipeline to move from dev to test to prod yelp issue what's the question is devops only suitable for enterprise level application because setting up there no anthony not at all so basically see setting uh, setting up devops environment is not at all complex and expensive so first we need to get from that uh, mindset that devops is only needed for the large applications why because see how it goes is if if you have small applications yeah it if if you have a small applications then what you will need is basically uh, a si single ci cd one single pipeline uh, a, a place to store your code and a small uh, infrastructure but what what benefits you will get out of it is anything which your developers push to the master branch is always a production ready you, because what it, what it does it it every time anything gets into your git master branch will be you know that there is a automated system developed that anything goes to master branch automatically that goes to dev test uat that automation we establish as a part of devops so it's not about the large systems or small systems it's all about the uh, understanding of how we have to actually um, go uh, approach this uh, devops and what actually we choose out of it right now that's where i wanted to discuss about this tool tool things now whatever i am highlighting on the screen this i am talking about ideal devops okay so what is ideal devops ideal devops will have a project management tool if you are you are managing your project in one of these tool jira tfs azure boards rally you are saving your project documentation in one of these sharepoint confluence wiki smartsheet azure wiki any any of this solution scm out of it code quality you are choosing or anything code testing you are cho choosing j unit cucumber ui testing selenium ci cd you are going for jenkins as your pipeline team so all these tools which i have listed in a single box they do the same job okay similar these are just competitors of each others right now packaging so under the ci cd we are i, I mentioned this the package art package part now packaging can be also done and stored in this kind of solution nexus repo jfrog docker container registry then the build tools now i i popped up this co build code now build code the uh, these tools jenkins azure pipeline steam city bamboo they give the framework of ci cd but inside that framework the small actions like building the code code quality code testing package is performed by different tools and those tools i am mentioning here 
So the CI/CD will give you the framework, right? That you see your pipelines created there. You see your um, running scheduling of a pipeline. The pipelines are running. They are failing with the logs. But ultimately, what they are doing behind the scenes, this pipeline they connect all these tools to form a DevOps environment, right? So packaging build tools then configuration management if you want to do some uh, configuration inside the vm using code then ansible chef puppet are the tools if you have to do infrastructure automation which i spoke about here iac we can use the tools like terraform arm cloud formation ansible now if you want to containerize your application you can go for docker docker compose kubernetes if you want to monitor your applications you have nagios elk cloudwatch so these all tools these all tools form under the umbrella of devops now very important question you will ask me sanket when i say i am a i am a devops enabled organization or i am i am i'm building a project which is enabled for a devops do i do i need to use all these tools i mean one tool out of these all rectangles so answer is no and and the same questions asked someone asked me that uh, it looks complex and expensive so devops doesn't give the at fixed contract that you need to use all this right based on your requirement if you see feel the project is uh, smaller you don't need a documentation solution you can skip this if you feel that i have in house source code management tool use that you don't have to use any one of them sometimes you feel that code quality is not that important i can bear that uh, cost then you can skip code quality now ci cd why it is kind of a mandatory for devops because that's where actually you build the automation of building your solution and deploying it manually uh, deploying it automatically right so that's where this decision has to be taken based on the scenario and based on the situation and based on the budget allocated to devops enable your project to devops okay and then out of this uh, using all these tools what we are achieving end of the day we will achieve our our website or our software developed on one of these deployment targets now what are the, our deployment targets they could be a public clouds like any service on aws azure or google or that could be on premises your on premises vm on premises hadoop kubernetes lambda azure function app services so basically deployment targets is the infrastructure and these all tools help us to deploy our application on this infrastructure okay and what this general section what i have written is for the devops engineers that when we do all these right these are the basic skills we should have that we should be good at linux why i am saying linux because 99% servers on the production are linux based environment there will be either centos there will be either your red hat or your ubuntu so you should have a, a when you say you, have, you want to do a career in devops or when you are hiring for a devops engineer they should be good at at least one of the scripting language they should they should know how the linux operating system works these are the basic thing and apart from that they should be good at one of at least two three tools out of this entire landscape okay so this is how the devops end to end landscape spans spans about Sorry. Okay. Hey, Vishwas. Yeah. So, any questions here? Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, everybody is so glad that this session happened. And okay, got it. Thank you so much. That's what Anthony said. And yeah, you know, I'm saying, guys, do drop any questions. But nobody is dropping any questions. So, hey, guys, you know, just a simple introduction to whatever I did for a while. You know, I just, uh, I just used to do a little bit of. Uh, Azure Sketches. If you can look at this, I do something called as hashtag Azure Sketches. You guys can see that it's my just initiative to learn what is this. So I'll be just showing you guys an Azure Open System. How is it all about when you're thinking of Azure in a very devastating fashion? Like, okay, I need to know this tool, that tool, but what next? What your deployments end up is in all these APIs and the Swagger APIs. So I'll be going at it in a very brief fashion, but have a great news for you. Cloud Labs is actually giving out free practice tests for all your basics of this uh, 
AI 900, DP 900, SC 900, PLS for Power Apps. If you want, just go there, start working. And if you want, please do follow my hashtag. It would be great if you can follow that. And also have one more thing to show. Just a simple intro about all the things that I just shared about. So I'll just go there. So yes, so that's fine. I think I have shared my screen. That's fine. And this is what you call an open system, right? You can have any any amount of CI CD tools, but the end result is you have an API, you have Swagger API, you're deploying it on Android, Xamarin, Flutter, or Web Power Apps, but you just have an open system for it. You have analytics here, you have data streaming here, data share, all the things, all the things is being combined here and it's just working good. And right now, I think this is what we really wanted. And uh, thank you so much, Sanket, sir, for sharing your insights. And it means a lot. And just a quick intro that we just gave, because in future sessions, we'll be calling a lot of data scientists. We will be talking to a lot of DevOps folks like Sanket, sir, so on. So thank you so much, Sanket, sir. Sanket. Hey, thanks, Vishwa. So um, I would like any uh, questions if you have. Um, and uh, on the time, Vishwas, how we are placed, uh, or can we cover some uh, five yeah, minutes more? You can more? still cover. Uh, oh, you can actually cover uh, twenty minutes more. We are just down by forty minutes okay. right now. Because those who are actually with me, um, so those uh, is I would like to add one more slide to this. And um, sure, um, sure. So let me just add. Uh, few quick things uh, what i was actually so now because today is all about introduction to devops i would also uh, like to pop up these two slides uh, basically not a slides or diagrams um, how actually the devops uh, when we say we have to uh, like because um, as per the agenda the second point was adapting to devops culture right now um, DevOps culture is not like I mentioned many times. It's it's not that straightforward activity. It 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 will have a lot of um, challenges, and it's all about how how teams united are. So basically, when I first time I wanted I I I was uh, assigned a task to convert a team from non DevOps to DevOps team. What was the strategy I applied? Okay, and uh, the strategy which we need to apply the very core part of DevOps is a discipline. Now, teams are used to with the approach that, okay, that any, any, anything requirement comes, we come directly sit for a coding, we push something, we don't have a proper mechanism, the code quality checks, we don't have that pull request mechanism. So code goes to that dirty and um, un unsecure code goes to production. The first and very important aspect of DevOps is process. We have to establish the process which end to end, uh, which covers the end to end landscape, which I just talked here. So, someone from your team, uh, which is a DevOps architect, has to establish a process and push continuously that team to follow that process. Now, like I said, day one it will not happen. After one month, also it will not happen. After six months, your team will start understanding the benefit of investing into the DevOps. Because your stakeholders, they are actually able to see your website after every sprint. And how that is, this is possible? Because you have set up the end-to-end -end automation. Now, what, what, what happens, right? When, you, when your um, DevOps architect sets up all these processes, right? There is, a, there is a branch policies, PR request, there is a CI CD flow, and there is a, um, there is a continuous monitoring happening on my infrastructure. So all these all these aspects of DevOps has to be has to be continuously monitored by someone, and that role generally played by DevOps architect. Now the teams needs to align with that uh, that uh, process which is set up by the technical architect. And what they do need to do next is continuously. If you are joining us today from different organizations, what is the best strategy worked for us is show your case studies of DevOps uh, implementations. Now, one project in your organization, suppose there are 10 projects, start applying DevOps on the first project, show that case study in your uh, regular forum, right? Uh, on your Friday, some 
create some sessions and tell them that initially we used to do 100 deployments in a month now today we are doing 1000 deployments now when i say 1000 deployments in a month our end end customers or our uh, stakeholders are really happy because they are seeing the system is continuously getting built that means we are enabling them to give us feedback faster if they want the sanket the title of that application is the red doesn't look good i want it blue or the functionality on my home page doesn't look good i want this at is different immediately that can be considered in the next sprint and that's what all agile is so devops agile is a conceptual thing right agile gives us a lot of um, uh, processes frameworks like scrum extreme programming and it talks about different thing right Pla planning sprints right sprint review sprint retrospective but who brings that into reality all these tools if you don't implement the agile with the help of devops tools then uh, achieving the pure agile strategy gets very difficult now uh, i wish was i i'll, I'll, I'll uh, um, when if we we cover the next sessions in the series i will go in more depth because of the time we cannot go in what actually this ci how it looks how cd looks but then mm -hmm. when you understand all this in depth you will actually start understanding okay benefits of this right i don't have to worry once i push the code i don't worry about the rest if it is a bad code i will get an email if it is a good code it will go on my dev environment there are all the approvals are in place that you get gets approved and gets into uat prod so we and if if something goes bad in my production i get an email or i get a teams message so that level of automation is happening and all these big teams are working in that way now the journey is a little hard in the start but once you achieve it it is a really a good feeling that okay we achieved the automation and now we are actually deploying the code on multiple servers now this is three servers but if automation is in place this could be thousand servers also we don't have to do anything it just we keep on scaling the infrastructure and my ci cd pipeline is capable of deploying on those okay so uh, that's what uh, I wanted to cover. And um, last point, if if uh, we have to talk about career in DevOps, again, as I put in the agenda, first, if you are initial learn, if you are learning DevOps initially, so how to learn? What is the way of learning the DevOps? So this I have been talking to all my uh, students uh, and those who joined fresher in the Microsoft also. And if I conduct any trainings, see what you need to do when you have to learn any tool first understand the concept of that tool not don't understand the tool i'm saying the concept so when i say concept what is the concept what is the actual purpose of ci solution what is the purpose of cd solution what is the purpose of this what is the purpose of this once you have this entire landscape in your mind then which second thing you need to do is to try it out right you need to jump don't put much don't uh, give much time on the theory just now install that tool or take the trial version of that tool try it out what it what actually it does try to fail right unless and until you try it out you will not fail you will see a lot of errors initially and after you get the errors you try to solve them and then study the best practice for that why you went into that error and that's how that's how thing has worked for me and I, I, I again suggest those who are starting their career in DevOps, you have to um, like I what I used to do is two weeks for one tool. Let's say take a Terraform, go to the Udemy videos for Terraform two weeks or go to the YouTube videos of Terraform or um, there are a lot of material now. Currently, Internet is booming. So you have a lot of material. Stick to anyone two weeks, one tool. Likewise, Two two weeks. If you give it to one tool, I I I see in six months you will have the entire landscape covered. So at least one tool from this entire landscape. And once that is done, you are good to position yourself as a de initial so DevOps engineer. And then rest all comes from experience. Then once you get that DevOps engineer title, then you just have to work on the production systems. So a DevOps engineer cannot be a pure DevOps senior engineer unless and until he has failed on the production and and that's how uh, we learn right at least in your life lifespan of DevOps engineer you have to fail once at least on the production that's how uh, that means you are trying something new and you are failing and then you are again learning the best practices okay and i think by saying that i will end today's session 
in consecutive series we'll go more depth on each of these tools and let's see how that gets scheduled and thank you vishwas and sandeep again thanks yeah thank you sankit thanks the session was very informative and yeah, uh, must be helpful I'll for waste, someone uh, yeah alvesh sir is just asking a question or uh, just an observation devops is no doubt a very important in project management i guess it still makes a bigger impact in service management as you have many more crs during the service management so what's your take on this sir absolutely absolutely alpe so like i and we have a big service management thing so when you talk about l1 l2 l3 team and uh, different change requests so what best than if you have day of right day of setup in place right so it surely makes a bigger impact on entire your change request so the moment you have a change request you do that you push it to the feature branch and the rest everything is automated moment goes code goes to feature branch your pull request will send a, a email to the reviewers they will look at your change what change you have done then code goes to master branch and that's how my ci pipeline triggers ci will build that code check for code quality check for testing test passes goes to uh, right cd solution now cd will take those artifacts deploy it to dev so you as a operations guy now don't have to keep on looking all these things right everything that framework is set up so everything is moving by the, the by themselves so if you even if you have 10 crs in 10 sprints uh, i won't say 10 sprints let's say five sprints if you have 10 change request that is easily now achievable with all these devops tools yeah right. and and yeah he's obviously you are uh, you're for a longer period with the customer service and management yeah i think he has got it Oh yeah, this is an amazing question. Like even I till four, there is a great stress on DevOps. Yeah. So absolutely, and and I would like to highlight, guys, those who are joining us today from data science, AI, ML background, right? Now is I'll tell you, and also um, from the database background. So DevOps is talks about development operations, right? Development plus operations. but now the industry is moving we are deploying ai ml iot all the applications on kubernetes clusters now because kubernetes cluster is really dynamic in nature and we have lot of benefits of kubernetes we will talk sometime about it but now how do you, how these guys are deploying these solutions and that's where the ai ops ml ops right data ops those things are also emerging currently so it is going to be sooner it is going to be star ops anything you give i have automation in place to put that on the production right and that's how it will uh, yeah that's that's how it will actually uh, give the importance of this ops automation concept right and the person who who uh, um, who actually advertises himself or advertises not the world who introduces himself at the as a ops engineer or a devops engineer should have only one mindset i would say that how i can automate anything you see manual activity how i can put automation there now tool comes as a second in nature if you build that mindset then out of 100 manual things you will at least build 70 automation things and that's where you will achieve the true quality of devops devops is not a fixed thing right you have to build that mindset of automation and that's when uh, then that's where alpesh has right uh, alpesh is saying right whether it is service management crs or um, uh, anywhere you take example if you automate something i will i would be happy to call you devops right because you are automating some part of your software dev development life cycle yeah yeah i think to add on to that there is a book called as visible ops security cloud security okay. Yeah. Please go and check that because it's a comprised version of all the things that we are talking about. Idle, of course, if you are lazy to read the five books of Idle like me, just go and read the docs. It's it's giving out okay. everything. <laughs> yeah. So in okay. addition to that, there is the next question. Uh, like what yeah. Vishal said, uh, that if somebody uh, was about to start DevOps, you recommend any specific resources or training? Sure. So. 
I would say uh, again, um, I, my personal favorite is Code Cloud. Um, so those, and I'm not here to advertise Code Cloud purely. So I'll tell two, two, three resources, and that has helped in my learning uh, journey. One is Code Cloud, uh, the Mumshad Manam, but the the guy, that guy, the entire videos of around uh, Kubernetes, Docker, Terraform, and uh, Ansible, really good. Check out first his YouTube videos. If you get interest, then subscribe to his uh, Code Cloud account. That's first Code Cloud. It is K K O D uh, K L O U D Code Cloud. Anthony. Second very good resource is a Tech World with Nana. It's a YouTube channel, and um, tech, I, I found it really interesting. Uh, uh, tech World with Nana. So she is a lady who is not from the technical background, but when she started learning DevOps, she really um, uh, she really uh, actually got a very good, very inter very much interest in the DevOps, and now she is one of the uh, good tutors on DevOps. Uh, Tech World with Nana. So these two resources I would like to highlight, and those who want to go into Azure side of a DevOps, right? And then there is this guy Adam. Search for Adam Azure for everyone. Okay, so three resources get started. Uh, it's nothing like that. You will surely get interest uh, in the in the DevOps world. And uh, the, there is a question from Alpesh, right? Yeah. Now Alpesh, the same problem which you are saying, right? Same Microsoft thought three years back, right? We wanted to build something. Now uh, looking at the diagram, right? At uh, this diagram, uh, Vishwas, can you still see my screen? Yeah, I can. We can see your screen. You can see, yeah, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh. So, guys, what 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 used to happen, right? And uh, there were a lot of players in the market. Now, this documentation, there are different tools. SCM, there are GitHub, Bitbucket, Code Quality, Testing, CI/CD. It sometimes gets difficult to develop end-to-end -end DevOps and choosing from these tools. Now, uh, Azure or Microsoft actually take that as a challenge and they build the platform which I am daily working on that is uh, Azure DevOps. Now, uh, if you see, now I am actually, let me point out my own, own environment. Uh, dev .azure, uh, if you go to dev.azure.com and if you sign in here, so this is a single platform of all Azure tools. Okay, so here you will see, okay, again, it's getting logged with my, So be it uh, storing your code, be it uh, creating CI/CD pipeline, be it a uh, monitoring solution, be it a uh, artifact solution, everything, everything we have built and in, in a single platform that is azure devops now um, well, how we have done it we have created a competition for each of the tool in the industry so i'll just give you the quick view of it so everyone what we discussed theoretically you will see that uh, practically so um, Right, so this is Azure account, but Azure has its own. Yeah, so now suppose this is my um, organization, which is a simply learn. Now, what what happens when any any project comes into the um, comes uh, in a uh, from the sales sales the lead gets converted into a project. Now, moment a lead gets converted into project. Now, this is my simply learn is one organization. Similarly, suppose you are building a startup. What you will do? You will create your new organization. Let's say called as a uh, something like you you can give his organization. I want to build a meetup solution so my organization my company name is meetup something like this so again uh, so meetup demo and it is mq uh, we are uh, we are at the top of the hour but i'll just take one minute 
so you guys will get the understanding of um, all right So imagine um, I will again uh, demo it later because of the time. So I what I did is in Azure DevOps, what they fa what facility they give you, you can create your own organization. Now Simply Learn is my organization, suppose. Now in this organization, I have a project called as a Mario game. This organization gives me a facility to create multiple games, right? So my uh, I am I have founded a startup which uh, under which i have 10 projects which are building the games so my first project is mario games second is aoa games third could be a um, any any xyz game okay now what we have given to the product teams is you create your whenever you start your startup or in your organization you create your organization under that organization you create your project now each project has it gets its own day ops interface now, once I go to this Mario game, what I'm going to get is the overview. This is my dashboard, how many repos I have. Okay, now if I go to my these boards under this game, I can manage my work here. So something could be, uh, the epic could be design, design Mario game, right? This is my epic. So I added my work item here. Now under and I, when I go to work items, so I can create my backlog here and and on the same portal under my simply learn organization under Mario game project, I can create my code repositories exactly below it like my backend Java, right? So similarly, I can create a repository something like as a infrastructure as a code IAC, and I can create here and I can store my code entirely in this repository something like suppose this has a this is let's say json right um something called as index.json so i can add my code here itself similarly like repos i can create my ci cd pipeline here itself create me your first pipeline similarly i can create my test plan artifacts so if you observe for any organization who wants to get into devops if they go for azure devops approach what they need to do they need to create one organization under that they will create a project and each project will get its own day offs different day offs tools and all this gets again it is very uh, in the start it is free to use and once you demand for more uh, pipelines and more private project it uh, it costs you but this is how alpesh the single platform day offs the azure day offs has taken a uh, good good attempt at it i would not say it is the best solution but a good attempt at it Thank you so much, sir. Thanks. Thank you so much for such great insights on DevOps. I think it's a lot for all of us to like just understand. Like, if you're a beginner, don't worry. This is just aiming to get you that hands on experience. So, we just gave a quick intro of all the things that we were able to. I think this was a great session. I think uh, really good one. Yeah. Thank you so much, Alpesh. And thank you so much, uh, Cody, Cody is an amazing uh, organizer, even in our community, and he is jacked up for DevOps in a very immense fashion. And yeah, I think thank you so much, folks. Thank you so much for attending this session. And thanks to Sanket, sir, for giving such a bright, insightful insights on DevOps. Hey, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Vishwas and Sanjay, for inviting. It's great. Thanks, Sanket. Thanks. Thanks. I'll end the broadcast now. Sure.